Hey everyone, I got kind of a new video for you guys, kind of a here's the news, prime news. If you guys have seen these videos in the past, you know what's going on. We're about to summarize a bunch of stories for you guys. I hope you're staying tuned because this is one of them and I'm pretty excited to finally be talking about this game and others again. So the game you're seeing up here on the screen is none other than Sports Story. That's right, the exclusive sequel to Golf Story on Nintendo Switch. And we have an update about that game today. It's sort of a small update, but it's an important one for anyone looking forward to it because we haven't seen this game in years. Uh, and that is, well, really a year. Uh, and that is from the developer Sidebar Games. They went out on Twitter today to say, everything is coming together now. Please look forward to more updates. We have much to share. So yeah, that's pretty exciting there. Uh, I'm really stoked to see more about this game. Uh, it, I, I really liked Golf Story. To me, it was what I wanted Mario Golf to be, and now Mario Golf Super Rush is coming out, maybe taking some hints from this with the RPG elements, because the single player mode from previews looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see what the final version of the game looks like. But if Golf Story is something to go off of, and there's a sports story with a bunch of different sports in it, I'm pretty stoked. Maybe we hear about it at E3, actually. Now that I think about it, are they teasing some news at E3? We'll have to find out. So as you can see up on the screen, we have news about Skyward Sword HD. Now this news is only exciting probably for some people, but uh, if you're in the UK, you're actually about to get really excited. But let's start here in the United States. GameStop announced yesterday that there is a new pre-order bonus for this game if you order it at their stores, and that is a Skyward Sword poster now this poster is actually nothing new uh this is actually official art from way back during the original release and i've actually seen it in poster form before so i really hope gamestop's not just repurposing older posters and they actually put the new skyward sword hd logo on it or something to signify this isn't just dumping of old stock uh but whatever the case might be that is at least a pre-order bonus that is present here in the united states now if you're in the uk uh, you can be very excited because today uh, it has been announced that the UK will be offering a Steelbook collector's version of this game. This is the same Steelbook that was previously announced for Japan and we thought was only going to be in Japan. Now it's coming to the UK. Won't be surprised if Australia gets it as well as they tend to get a lot of the similar things as the UK. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed the Steelbook is not coming here in the United States. And it's an important to note, the local uh, companies usually you know, talk about what's going to be coming. Uh, so Nintendo of America, Nintendo of Europe, Nintendo of Japan, they make these decisions. Uh, Nintendo of the UK makes this decision. Now, when it comes to the GameStop poster, clearly it was GameStop that made that decision. Uh, but it would be nice to see Nintendo of America come up maybe at E3 or something and announce some sort of collector's version, whether it's a Steelbook or something else. I wouldn't mind a version that has, say, the Amiibo, that, that Skyloft Amiibo packed in. I think that would be really neat. We've seen Nintendo do this in the past with things like the Wind Waker, uh, things with uh, Wind Waker HD, I think had a, a collectible Ganon uh, dwarf statue you could have gotten. There was also Majora's Mask 3D where you could have got the collectible figure for that. So it would be cool to see that packed in. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. I'm very hopeful for E3 for an announcement of some type. Uh, remember, the game comes out on July 16th. And during E3, we are not only giving away a copy of Skyward Sword, we're giving away a Skyloft Amiibo, and we're giving away Skyward Sword Joy-Cons. So if you're very interested in any of the Zelda stuff, be sure to tune into E3 for your chance to win. We are giving away it live, so you have to actually be present to win and i'll let you know right now we're giving away all three of those items on the final day of e3 uh you know which is the day nintendo is presenting their information mario golf super rush yeah folks uh, i'm super excited about this game all the previews are looking fantastic and we have a little bit of a news update for you today they have updated the official website for this game which normally would be notable if there was new information and there's not but if you are a my nintendo member there are five hidden holes you can find on the website to earn 100 platinum points and again they've started to increase the value of what the gold and platinum points can be for you and the things you can get with it some physical items obviously uh, we all know about the conversions uh, to get discounts on the eShop so yeah this is really really neat uh, I'm just glad they're doing something they've been doing this with some of their games over time I just wanted to let you guys know for those of you trying to bank it up plus they gave me an excuse to talk about this absolutely fantastic game that I'm actually really looking forward to and we're probably going to be streaming it on the first day that it comes out and having a lot of fun and maybe playing some online match 
matches, getting into the single player RPG mode. I'm super excited. This looks like a, a really full experience and everything I wanted Mario Tennis Aces to be, but this time in golf form. Uh, and obviously, Golf Story really set a high bar. A prior story we had about Sports Story, but Golf Story really set a high bar for RPGs in golf. Uh, we'll see how this measures up. Next up, we got a ton of new screenshots for No More Heroes 3, a game coming out later this year, I believe in August. It's a pretty uh, exciting game, a sequel to uh, two prior games, plus uh, Travis Touchdown Strikes Again, uh, a kind of a spin-off sort of style game for uh, No More Heroes. And again, this, this stuff goes back to the Wii era. Uh, and yeah, 1 and 2 are actually coming to PC. That was a recent announcement as well, so congrats to PC owners out there, PC gamers. Uh, but No More Heroes 3 is coming exclusively, at least for now. Now, I'm sure down the line it'll get ported to PC at least, uh, to Nintendo Switch. And these screenshots make this game look better than ever. The first time we saw this game from Grasshopper Games, it looked a bit rough. The last time we saw it, which is what you're seeing up here, it looked a little bit better. And now these screenshots look even better. I think the game is just coming along as they add more and more polish. And I don't expect the same polish as, say, a Breath of the Wild or uh, a GTA V or some sort of massive AAA experience. Grasshopper Games is a smaller studio, but they clearly are putting their best efforts into this game. Uh, Strikes Again was really, really good as a spinoff, and this one's obviously looking really, really good as a main series entry. For their sake, and I think for the sake of the No More Heroes franchise, I hope that this game performs very, very well. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. I know it's a game I'm keeping tabs on. I think I need to see about one more trailer to convince me to buy it, uh, because you know I've had some fun with No More Heroes, but I've also gotten bored with it in the past. So here's hoping that 3 captures my imagination, and keeps it going. And our final story today is about Capcom uh, and some big oopsies they did. Uh, Judy A. Jurekchek is actually suing Capcom right now in wake of the last data mine uh, because, yeah, Capcom had a really bad data mine happen. They got, their servers got hacked. It was pretty bad. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff that's come out of that that we haven't really covered. But one thing that's happening now is that this person, who is an artist of sorts, is suing Capcom for use of at least 80 images, 80 photos to be exact, uh, in games such as, well, the one up here, Resident Evil in fact, here's an image showing off uh, some evidence of it where it looks like they definitely used some aspects of a photo she took of broken glass with a door behind it uh, that in the actual Resident Evil 4 logo. And her claim is that Capcom uh, never licensed this material or paid to use it. And what sucks is uh, she was actually licensing these photos at the time and you could pay to have the right to use them in something like Resident Evil 4. So Capcom could have avoided all of this and just paid the licensing fees for these photos. It's very common to use photography uh, from various places in video games and obviously get the copyrights to do that. They didn't do that. And she is seeking uh, anywhere from $2,500 to $12,500 in damages uh, per photo. And then also the courts potentially could award her up to $12 million in copyright infringement. Capcom is obviously refusing to comment on the story, but she has provided over, well, I think not over, exactly 100 pages of evidence to support all of this. Uh, and it definitely, at least on the surface for me, looks like Capcom was pretty guilty of this. Now, some might be wondering, hey, Resident Evil 4 came out a hell of a long time ago, so did the other game in her lawsuit. Why is she suing now? And I think a lot of this is just because of self-awareness. Uh, I don't think this person in particular is heavy into video games and was aware of it. And this happens all the time, by the way, when you have some original work or some original photography uh, from tombs and other places where, hey, you might not be aware of everywhere that work might end up getting used uh, without your knowledge. And what happened in this, you know, this data leak uh, coming to light is that, you know, a bunch of imageries and art assets came out and she was able to kind of look at it and be like, holy crap, uh, I didn't realize they were using my stuff. That is a big no-no and this is a massive company. I'm going to sue the hell out of them. And uh, it does definitely, at least to me, you know, not guilty uh, until obviously proven in court, but it appears on the surface just as like an outsider like me looking in that Capcom certainly uh, is pretty guilty here. Uh, Capcom has not had a great run when it comes to PR between uh, obviously the servers getting hacked and the data leaks and then obviously this lawsuit. Not exactly a good PR. At least obviously Monster Hunter uh, Rise is really, really good. We can look forward to Monster Hunter Stories too. The games are hitting, but obviously uh, from a PR perspective, 
this is a bit rough, right? We, we have to understand that Capcom is uh, a massive company and stuff like this shouldn't happen, right? It, this should be almost inexcusable in any industry, especially from a studio that's as big as Capcom. You know, if an indie studio had done it, uh, that still sucks and is wrong, but at least I could kind of understand maybe there's some financial reasons that maybe they thought they could just slip it under the radar. This is Capcom, and even back in these days with Resident Evil 4, they were still a massive company and easily could have afforded to pay the licensing fees to use this stuff so yeah it's kind of a pain in the butt it kind of sucks for capcom uh she is seeking to get a, a jury trial not just you know just in front of a judge she actually wants an actual jury to look at all of this and that's probably because she's seeking the maximum uh in terms of paybacks which could make her quite wealthy uh, not that this person isn't already doing well for themselves i have no idea but uh yeah this is just something i'm throwing out there you guys let me know what you think about this lawsuit uh did capcom is capcom guilty in your opinion uh and you know what is the appropriate damages here obviously the courts have an up to 12 million dollars for copyright infringement and obviously you know however much each of those images that capcom might have infringed is actually worth individually in damages so anyways you guys let me know what you think about all five of these stories and what you think of this new type of video again i talked about this video over the weekend maybe coming because i said hey look you know i want to try something different i want to try something uh, at the channel that I've done before, but maybe in a more concise package. And not only that, I want to cover stories that I don't typically cover. All these stories I would not have made videos about. Uh, these are not big enough stories to me, but I think packaged all together, uh, it ends up being something that is worthwhile and ends up giving you even more information. Now, we'll see if I end up doing this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's my original plan. Uh, but for now, I hope you enjoy this video. And you know what, folks? I'm streaming tonight at 8 p.m. I'll probably have at least one more video today, and I'll catch you in the next piece of content I do, whatever it is. Oh, by the way, guys, we're almost to E3, baby. E3 is this Saturday! Yeah!